Hey guys, I'm Dave here. If you're watching this video, it's because you, maybe you, you want to buy the Mac Mini M1 and you're still not sure if it's powerful enough for you and maybe you should go with the Mac Studio or maybe you want the Mac Mini M1 but you don't know which specs you should go and hopefully by the end of this video you will know exactly what to buy. Now I'll show you a few sessions running both in Cubase and Logic and these are real mixing sessions instead of a bunch of audio tracks running in Logic Pro. So let me show you. Okay, so just you know, I'm running this Mac Mini M1 with a Focusrite Claret Plus 2 interface and I'm running this Logic session with a few virtual instruments. At the same time, I'm running this Cubase session, which is not big, but has maybe 50 tracks. And I'll show you the plugins in a few seconds. And I'm running one YouTube video, two YouTube videos and a few more web pages. Now, both sessions are running with a buffer size of 1024. Logic Pro is running in native version, while Cubase is running in Rosetta mode. Now let me show you the virtual instruments here. So one instance of contact and it's still running really well. Sampler, another instance of contact. Archetype, one, Helix native. And th this takes a f uh, like one second or so to open just when I run Logic in native mode. Not sure why yet, but in Rosetta mode it opens instantly. Now there's another archetype and another archetype here and there's chroma verb. And as you can see, everything is running smoothly. Now there's more reverbs and you know, the usual plugins. As you can see, this is running and Cubase is running too. Now in Cubase, let me just show you. I have three instances of verb suite Lustrous plate, visual tape, acoustic audio, which you know it's pretty heavy on CPU, virtual mix rack, SSL channels, and as you can see, it's running pretty smoothly. Not to mention that I am recording the screen and I still have the Elix HS Edit open it too. And as you can see, Logic Pro is still running too. So I'm not sure about you, but I usually only use uh, one DAW at a time. And when I'm working, I usually don't have YouTube or anything open it. Uh, so it's only usually only the door. And so this is running uh, like this for about 20 minutes now and still no crashes or overload systems in Logic Pro whatsoever. And so just to show you now, I'm not a really big into computer thing. Uh, I'm not an expert for sure, but here's the, all the data I can show you. And the memory is well, it's almost running out of memory. Now, if I close the Logic project, now I just closed it both Google Chrome and the Logic session. And as you can see, the memory is running really smoothly now, which is usually how I run the computer. I don't use a lot of VSDs and I use this computer mainly for mixing. And I never had one single problem, both in Cubase and Logic, which is amazing for a computer. I think I paid 800 euros a couple of years ago and I bought this one. I wanted to buy the 16 gigs of RAM, uh, but at the time uh, I bought it from Amazon and this was the only model available and I didn't want to wait. Uh, that's the only reason I bought this one. Now, if you wonder which one to buy, I will definitely recommend you to buy the 16 gigs of RAM with one terabyte of disk space, just because you wanted to future proof yourself and you want to make sure that your computer will run really well for a lot of years. Now, just to show you, I have Cubase running at 32 samples buffer size for about 10 minutes now. As you can see, 32 samples here and it's running just, just fine. And so for mixing and, and I have some sessions with 100 and more tracks with a lot of plugins of every kind and I have no complaints and I definitely don't need more than this one. Now, I do have the MacBook Pro 14 inches and to be honest with you, I didn't even try it here uh, because I didn't feel the need. Now, when it comes to connectivity, I'm using all the ports, both USB-A and USB-C or Thunderbolt. I'm running two screen monitors, my iLock, my other interface, and I have this little dock, USB dock with three more additional USB ports to plug things like hard drives, uh, my keyboard and something that I might need. It doesn't make any noise. It's always cold. And so far I didn't have any problem whatsoever. And so to wrap up this video, unless you're using a lot of VSTs, the eight gigs of RAM will be enough for mixing, of course. 
but I still need to recommend you the 16 gigs of RAM so you can future proof yourself. And that's it for today guys, I hope this video can help you out choosing the best Mac for you and I guess I'll see you in the next video, cheers!